Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. It is uh, 9 o'clock on the dot here in another wonderful winter Seattle uh, day. Although, Tier, you've just got a quite a bit of snow last night where you're at. Yes, we got about 10 inches of snow lovely. last night. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so a quick good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone joining us today. Uh, we have a lot to cover, so we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. Thierry, I'm going to have you uh, take care of this next one. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. So super excited to be with, uh, with the community again. Uh, today is a special day because uh, we're going to get to talk about some super early features and preview of, uh, of uh, some pretty big change we're doing. So yeah, we're going to focus a lot of today. My objective is to, uh, for Ben and I to show you what we're currently working on, even though you can't put your hands on it yet. But it's early enough that we want, actually want to gather some feedback from you today through, and we're going to make it as interactive as possible. We have three demos. We're going to stop in between each of the demos and get your hot feedback on what you saw, but potentially entertain questions around, will we be able to do this? Will we be able to do that? Where are you thinking of going with those kind of features and things like that? So really encourage you to be asking us as many questions as you as you have, and be candid with us. Give us a feedback. It's early enough that we could change course. If you all hate what you're seeing, well, we can say, okay, let's scan that and start from the ground again. Uh, so please you know, share with us your feedback, both positive and negative or constructive. Uh, and then also a way to gather some feedback from you tomorrow, and we'll talk about how you can become an active participant into the preview program, because we're probably going to be on a preview program for probably a couple of months. There's a lot of features we need to do here, a lot of work we need to do. We're not quite ready to go prime time. Uh, and we want to be able to engage you to test it with all of your situations and scenarios as extensively as possible to make sure that when we really need to go real and go live, because we're going to go live, we're going to have to replace the existing chart with this thing. And that means it's going to be available for everybody. It's going to migrate and upgrade for everybody all at once. And we have to get it 100% right. So we really have to go through extensive uh, and, and intense testing for that. So you know, the way we'll, we'll focus uh, the, the time today, we'll talk about why are we making the change? What exactly are we changing? We'll spend time on the demos. And then we'll close by talking a bit about when will, have to, when will the change happen or when will the preview be rolled out? When will the GA is available? What's happening after the chart view? What, where else are we going to change some of the experiences? And then how things will happen. So does that sound reasonable as an as a, as a agenda for today? That sounds great, Thierry. All right. All right. Uh, so really quickly, we're going to introduce you to who you'll be speaking with today. Uh, Thierry, you just uh, spoke a little bit. But if you want to say one or two things about yourself and your journey with AppSheet, yeah, so I've been with AppSheet since before the acquisition, about a year before the acquisition, uh, uh, leading the engineering and product uh, before the acquisition, mostly focused on the engineering part now. Uh, there's one person who's not here today, but you've, you've, you've interacted with in the community as well, and that's Archer, our product managers, who unfortunately has a conflict, so he could not attend today, but he's also somebody that you can engage with uh, in the community related to any chart related. Prior to being an AppSheet, I spent you know, about six years of my life in a little company that you may have heard of called Tableau. So I did a little bit of uh, visual analytics in my past, and uh, maybe you'll see some influence in what you will see today. Excellent. All right, thank you, Terry. And uh, next up is Ben. Hi, I'm Ben. I'm I'm pretty new to AppSheet. I joined uh, AppSheet in October. Started working on some of these features here. Um, I'm very excited to kind of help with this experience and make our charts awesome. So uh, yeah, before that, I've been in the startup community in Toronto for a long time. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully can bring some of that wisdom to uh, AppSheet, really. Excellent. Thank you, Ben. Uh, and for those of you that have not had a chance to meet me, my name is Jennifer. I'm a product marketing manager with AppSheet Google Cloud. I've been with AppSheet a little bit less time than Thierry, but before acquisition as well. Um, and it's wonderful to meet you all if you have not joined us before. Welcome. And a couple things to expect, aside from what Thierry mentioned at the top in terms of the content that we'll cover, I have a few resources I'll share with you all in just a moment, which are great, especially if you're new. Uh, keep questions coming in throughout the session. We'll try to pepper them in. Um, we also recommend posting questions on our community link for this, which is where many of you registered. But there should be a link down in the box as well. Uh, it's a great place to crowdsource answers and solutions if we're not able to get to them during this time. Uh, it's more visible and it, it's a greater point of reference. 
Any questions that uh, you ask in the Q&A box that we're unable to address in the session, we'll do our best to follow up with you afterwards to get you an answer if we don't have one or don't have time to get to it. All right, now with that, uh, a few resources and then we'll get into charting. So if you are new to AppSheet, Welcome. Uh, it's great to have new citizen developers here. We have a great resource, which is the AppSheet Creator Community. You can reach it at community.appsheet.com. Uh, there's one post in particular I like to call out, which is this Learn How to Use AppSheet post. It's a list of our top 10 resources for getting started with the platform, including access to our free Udemy course, which is what we consider our AppSheet Academy or AppSheet 101. It's a 90-minute course that gives you the fundamentals to get started, there's also other resources like our YouTube channel, previous office hour sessions, and another of um, other previous courses that we've run our articles that are helpful for you. Now, this is one aspect of it. If English is not your first language, or if you work with clients where English is not their first language, we do have a crowdsourced non-English resource um, post as well, and, and it, we've done a great job of making it really visible in the community space. I think we're up to 24 languages right now. That includes Japanese, uh, Thai is listed there. I've seen Portuguese, Spanish, a number of others. So please check this out. It's a great way to see how our AppSheet creators are helping other creators. And we always uh, tend to learn a lot from you all, but especially in cases such as this. So give it a look. Uh, these two resources are really great uh, to getting you started on your journey. All right, so Thierry and Ben, I will turn it over to you. Fantastic, thank you. So uh, a couple of slides and then we'll jump right into the demos. So the first thing is, why are we even changing our chart library and experience? A uh, couple of reasons, you know, first thing is the rendering experience was very obsolete and fairly feature limited. I won't go through all of the features, but you can some of them below. A lot of things you have you know, suggested over the years, you know, can we do this, could we do this, could we do that? And when we started to look at making those enhancements, we realized it was really hard to maintain that code and apply fixes, mostly because the library was very low level and we had to pretty much implement every behaviors. So we looked at something that was also Google approved as a library, and because now we're part of the Google family, uh, so for security, compliance, privacy reasons. So I mean, we had to make sure we use the right technology, but also we wanted to look at a technology that was more declarative and higher level, uh, level of abstraction. So the authoring experience also, the one that we currently have, is not providing, I should not say was, but is not providing enough declarative capabilities, self-exploration and direct manipulation of data. Uh, it's very, very indirect. So uh, instead of just trying to fix what we had, uh, I made a decision, that was way before the acquisition, to really uh, rethink about uh, that, 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 that entire experience in something that is more expressive and feature-rich with, with more direct manipulation of the data uh, that all, will allow you to have more power of expressiveness and declarative making uh, to, to make it more efficient for you to, and for us to add more capabilities. Uh, and that's going to uh, end up being easier to maintain and adapt, which means we'll be able to iterate and add feature faster uh, moving forward. Uh, next slide, please. So what is changing? We currently, what we have today is what I categorize as a chart wizard experience. Like pretty much every other product on the planet, it's a chart wizard, meaning you first have to choose what chart type you want to lay out your data with, which means, and that's an important point that most people don't, that, I, that needs to be underscored, means you need to know the results you're looking for. You need to know exactly what insight you're trying to convey or you're trying to identify from your data upfront. So you need to do that mental reasoning first to know what is the most appropriate chart to use, and then you need to do all the hard binding of your columns to that chart types. But if that was not the right chart, or if you have a new question, or if you realize your question is now slightly different from what you had, or what you're trying to convey is a slightly different question and answer than what you had initially, you can have to restart from zero you really cannot have a conversation with your data that really takes you to the place of the right type of output that you're trying to use to collaborate and to convey the information to your users. So what I really wanted to do with Praveen, and we talked about that a long time, you know, that was about, about a year ago already, really try to move that towards more of a data analytic experience where you really have more freeform experience when you can declare which fields are really the ones that are important for your questions. And then the system will lay it out for you. Now, of course, you can overwrite anything that we're laying out for you, but we'll do the right smart layout of that data for you. And then we'll let you act on it 
on the chart directly to filter, sort, pivot, and really have a much more interactive and direct experience inside of the chart itself. And if you have a new question, well, you don't need to restart from zero. You can just start adding more fields. You can switching fields. You can, and I will show you a lot of that today as well. So you can do a lot of uh, replace and, and try it out in a very safe uh, type of way. I apologize for the background noise. I'm, of course, you know, uh, home, like we all are, and sharing the household with my wife, who is in the training right now. She works at Microsoft, so the half of the house is, you know, Microsoft territory. The other half is Google territory, but unfortunately, there's no walls in between. So that's her that you can hear right now. Okay, so let's jump into the demo. So maybe next slide uh, before we go into the demo. So there's two things I really want to impress on what we're trying to achieve here and that we'll want to get your feedback on. So first thing is smart default. I already alluded to that. In order to get you to be more efficient and go faster, further into your analysis, we want to do as, as many smart things as possible to try to, to, to remove all of, the, all of the detail clicking you have to do just to get to a proper first result. So we want to take that, uh, you know, not away, but out of the equation, allowing you to override if we got it wrong, but you really try to get it right, and I'm impressed on that on, on all of the tables. So my goal and our goal with Ben and, and Arthur is really, in the most case possible, get you very close to your results in less than two clicks. Um, and then the next thing is really self-exploration. If, if it wasn't right, it wasn't the right field, it wasn't the right layout, really allowing you to change things on the fly directly in the chart itself, rendering itself, and, and have as much of a delightful experience uh, as possible. All right, so let me share my screen and uh, spend a bit of time showing you uh, some of those things. And then we'll, we'll stop uh, in between each of the uh, demos and pause there and then uh, take as many of your questions as possible. So we'll, we'll, we'll try to do about 10 minutes for each demo Q&A. And that should take us uh, about uh, 10 minutes before the end and then we can just wrap it up. So what you're seeing here is the uh, current, uh, current experience. And what we're going to do, we'll talk about that for the beta, but what we'll do for the beta is we'll, we'll give you both. So I have two data sets here to be able to show, have enough variety of data to show you a lot of situations and scenarios. So film, movies. Uh, so movies, this is the current experience. Uh, there's awards, popularity, director, actress, actors, title, lens. You know, you understand, you know the experience. You can go from awards to subject. It will lay out the subjects for you. You can change the measure uh, from average uh, lens to average popularity. And that's it. And then you can publish it, and that's it. You know, there's really no filtering here, no sorting, no interactive that you can do if you want to see, well, which one is the highest one? Is it crime? Is it adventure? Is it romance? Is it short? Which one is hard to tell because, uh, well, because you cannot really sort them in the descending order and see which one is the topmost. So let's see what the new chart experience, which is a new icon you will see here once we put you into the rollout. Uh, you have the new chart experience. For now, we're not persisting the result. So whatever you wrote here in the old experience is what gets persisted with the app. Whatever you do in the new chart experience is discarded any single time you lose uh, the session. We'll have to figure out when we start allowing you to persist, when we're uh, confident enough we have enough backward compatibility so that you don't lose work. Uh, but for testing purposes, so this is a new experience you, you will get or we're proposing for you to have. What you have here are all the fields. And you can filter. If you have a really long list, you can start looking for you know, the one that actually are, are your field. So, you know, kind of make it easy because sometimes we know you can have dozens and dozens, maybe sometimes hundreds of columns and it's hard to just navigate through a job only. So you want to find them here. So let's go back to that subject uh, chart that we had where we had to job on a couple of things. Double click, I just did a double click here, boom, you got your chart. What you notice is that the first thing is we lay out a chart by default. We didn't ask you what type of chart to do. We realized that because subject is a categorical, categorical field, the right way to present it is with a bar chart. And by default, we are introducing a new concept called record count. It's literally aggregated with how many records we have for each of those subjects. And then you can start doing some things, like sorting by alphabetical order or sorting by the measure. So here, now we can see drama is the one that has the most record. But remember, we were looking for length or popularity at the time. I think that was popularity here. So I can do popularity here. I can change on the fly the measures to be average, and I can see that crime is indeed the one that has the highest popularity. What about if I want to add another measure, like length, for example? Well, here I can do average as well. And now I can start playing with the sorting. Say, okay, well, which one is actually the, the, the one that has the longest length? Well, it looks like Roman's movie, 
are on average the ones that, that are the longest, uh, but they're not necessarily the most popular. But if I want to sort now by popularity instead, what I will see is that it looks like crime, as we were saying, are the ones that have the, you know, potentially the best ratio of, um, of popularity and length at the same time. So as I was saying, and oh, I, yeah, there's a new element here that maybe I didn't introduce yet. There's actually on the, on the canvas filter as well. So we can do some runtime filtering as well as uh, visually here, as well as some filtering of whatever metrics or whatever color you're deciding to apply. So we can do some, some interaction directly inside of, this, uh, of the chart itself. The one thing, as I was saying, we did lay out as a bar chart by default, but nothing will prevent you from changing that to a line chart if you wanted to. It doesn't really make sense analytically. It's really better presented as a bar chart because it's not a continuous fill, uh, but that's what you will see here. So, so you can override it here. Uh, and then we have a couple of things like you know, being able to swap uh, if you really wanted to present one way or the other uh, in terms of the axis, and then just reset will just bring us back to zero. So let me pause here. That's the end of the first demo. Of course, there's a lot more I want to show you in terms of smartness and behaviors and type of charts that we can build. Uh, but let me just pause here and maybe see what kind of questions have come up so far. Yeah, so uh, the first question, and Terry, this is probably one of the um, most important ones, is when is this live? When is this live? The, we'll talk, that will be yeah. the, one of the closing slides. We'll talk about that. So I'll punt on this one for a <laughs> second here. All right. OK, perfect. Let's go through the list. Um... I saw there were a couple of questions on Google uh, Studio integration. I'm going to take those Google Studio integration while you're scanning the rest of the questions, Jennifer. So uh, yeah, Google Studio part. is actually technology that I've been assessing too. We've been looking at it. Can we integrate it here? Does it do what we want? It is still a chart wizard. You still have to choose the chart type first uh, rather than actually interacting directly with your data the way I did it here. Uh, there is definitely some current legal uh, implications. It's, it's a part of Google that uh, is a different part of the family of Google. So we, we, it's not a technical integration as much as we have to figure out whether we are allowed to integrate that technology that's part of ads right now. Uh, so it's, it's, it's definitely something that we have an active discussion about, but I just don't have a time frame for. Uh, but if and when we are free to do that integration, we'll absolutely be looking at doing that integration. Uh, here's a question for relevant to this particular section. What happens if the gap between the scale of the two categories is too big? Well, I mean, if it's too big, it will it will still lay it out for you. That means one of the bar chart will be flattened to pretty much null. You probably will, will not see that. I can actually reproduce that. Uh, if I make, I think, length sum, it will totally flatten the other one. That's what you just did here. And so you won't see it, not because the data is not here, but it's because it's way too small. Uh, and, and the thing is, in that case here, comparing average and sum makes no sense analytically. That doesn't mean you cannot put yourself in that situation. And that's where we have to be tricky. Should we prevent you from putting yourself in that wrong situation? Well, we also have to be careful to try to be overly smart. But by being overly smart, removing you from taking an intermediate step to get to another result. So yeah, the result today is you will have that situation until you change it to an average back, and then you will see it again. All right, uh, one more, Terry, and then we can move on to the next section. And this is somewhat related to the Google uh, Data Studio that you referenced previously. Uh, question is, are any upcoming features focused on data summarization, such as pivot tables, Google Data Studio, et cetera? Uh, we spend a lot of time trying to take our app sheet data and efficiently yeah. summarize and analyze it. Yeah, so what we're building here will give you that capability to do that summarization with a lot more flexibility than you could before. It's not just going to be a chart report. It's actually going to be a, a full analytical pivot, visual analytic pivot experience. Back to the, the, the question on integrating with Google Data Studio again, we will look at integrating with Google, Studio, uh, Google Data Studio whenever we can. Uh, that's definitely something we want to do at some point uh, and, and, and as soon as we can that uh, the Various teams at Google tell us we can do it. We will look at do it. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, you will have a lot more power to pivot, uh, you know, to pivot or aggregate here, as you can see already uh, in, in, in this uh, capability here. There's another question around being able to export the result. You can export the result in PDF already today. Uh, by the way, you can create a workflow that will generate a PDF with a view of your chart. Now, it's a static view of your chart in the current state that it is in the app. Um, 
And you also can export the data. That's also aggregated through that chart here. All right, so I noticed there was a question about, can we see other chart type like bubble chart? And I'm very thankful that you should ask that. So let's reset here. And uh, let's reset and look a bit more on our data set. Let's look at all of the titles here, for example. So all the titles, and again here, if I look by length, because we noticed that there was the dramatic, the uh, romantic movie were very, uh, uh, very long. Uh, if I saw it here again, What's interesting is, and I can swap it, uh, we can notice that indeed some of the movies, like one here, is really, really long. And that's also where I can use uh, this sorting, not sorting, sorry, that filtering capability to kind of go into, just look at really the most, uh, the, 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 you know, the longest movie. And we can see that at the very top here of the movie is Holocaust, which is 450 minutes. So it's really, really, really long movie. But what if I want to re now do an analytic that has multiple measures, multiple numerical field to look not just at, I want to see the combination of uh, year, length, and popularity as it relates to each and every movie. It would be hard to do it with 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 side by side bar chart. We could do it here, but visually and analytically, it would be hard for you to figure out the correlation between those two measures. So let's start again and see what if now we put some measures in place. So this is the year of release of the movie. Let me double click on it. So it's right here. And notice that we didn't lay it out for you. Why? Because we only have a numerical field. So yeah, we could have done a histogram by record count, which I could still do, but there's ambiguity here. What if I added, instead of a, a categorical field, what if I added another numerical field? Let's say length, for example. And here, what will happen is by default, now we realize, okay, you gave us two measures to play with. The best way to represent the, all the movies with those two measures is actually a scatter chart, a scatter plot. So, uh, or also known as a bubble chart. So now I have all of the charts here, and I can same thing here. I can use filtering. We can find our friend here, Holocaust, which is you know was released in 19678, 450 minutes. We have a bunch of movies here. We can filter to only the one that they say are within the two to three hour rent. There's still a lot of them. You know, I can move that. And what we're also looking at, of course, is being able to persist that and being able to persist it at design time, but potentially still giving users uh, runtime ability to do that kind of uh, on the fly runtime filtering on whatever you've already preset at design time. So uh, what if now I wanted to add another uh, measure? But let's say I want to add the popularity on top of that. Notice that we've added two new pills that are, don't exist today in the current experience that allow you to express you know, declaratively more dimensionality into your visualization by adding other size or colors. So let's see the effect of that. So what if I drag now or double click popularity and bring it onto size? So what happened now is it does indeed now start to size the bubble. And of course here, because it's very dense, it's all like uh, over each other. Now we can see that our uh, Holocaust movie was not very popular and then other ones indeed were actually fairly popular here. Now you also notice there's something, you know, that's why I'm telling you it's not finished. Here now by default, we're showing the tool tip all the three dimension and also the row label, the ID label. And what you really will want to have here is actually, sorry, not the ID, but the label. What you will want to see here is the title of the movie and not just the row number. So we need to add a new peel here about being able to customize the tooltip, which we will do as well. But in our example here, the best way to represent that third dimension is not uh, actually the size. It's probably more the color. So that now as I'm moving this into color, well, now I can see, okay, that's, you know, it still overlaps a lot, but I can go to each and every distinct movie and see how popular they were. We can see again that our Holocaust movie was not very popular, uh, but that other movie here, which I can tell which one it is, because again, we're showing the row number instead of the, of the title. Uh, and, and we should use the title because we know the title has been uh, tagged in your application as the, the one to use for label. So we already have the metadata and the, and, and the smart in, in the way you declare the, 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 the roles of the uh, columns in the application to know what the right thing to do here is. So really that's what we should do here is actually do the, do the title. So anyway, so we've done, uh, now we've done a new type of chart. Now one of the thing we've done here is because you have three measures at play, uh, when you drop it down here, we're only really giving you the offer of the scatter because that's the only thing that makes sense with those three uh, dimensions that are at play, but if you, did, um, if you did reset it here, what you will notice is that we actually now give you all of the options. Now, we clearly have only implemented uh, behaviors for bar lines and scatter, so I know we're missing one of the crowd favorite, which is uh, donuts and pie charts, which even though 
they're usually not the best uh, analytically sensitive things to do, they're still very popular. So we'll implement pie, pie charts and donut chart, but uh, that, that, that's why we're not we're, we're far from being finished here. So, all right, let me pause here and maybe get the next set of questions. Yeah, so um, I've got a great one here on Instagram. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, we, well, we, we need to have the color legend, we need to have size legends, uh, we need to, for you to be able to change the size legend. So for example, what I was doing here, if you remember, uh, when I was doing the year, the lens, and the popularity uh, in color, but really, so here, by the way, we should be able to change the legends so that you can, and, and look, look, this is the thing that's also interesting I forgot to show you here, is you can actually go through each of the legend and interactively actually highlight what it is and, and where it is on your, uh, uh, on, on, on your, uh, it's actually should be, so, uh, yeah, so, so what I mean to say, yes, yeah, so you should also be able to change the actual, uh, change the actual color scheme. Like you might want to do green to blue or white to blue or, or white to green, depending on what is it that you're trying to represent. So we know that colors has a huge meaning that sometimes has a different meaning in different cultures. So red might not be the best way to represent something uh, in all cultures. So we have to let you change it. We, same way here, we have to be able to let you change the size itself. So, you know, what is the minimum size, you know, or what is the maximum size that a bubble should be? Because here, for example, I might want to reduce the maximum size of a bubble, what the upper end of that range, to a smaller size so that we can still more distinctively see all of the bubbles in the chart. So we, we definitely want to be able to give you a chance to uh, interact by actually uh, interacting directly with the legends themselves. Hopefully that did answer your question. If it didn't, please uh, ask, more, ask more. Yeah. Uh, so I have another question. It's related more to the bar style uh, chart. Uh, they're asking, can bars be used as a filter without taking you to a drill screen or a data table? Yes. Uh, I thought I did. I will show that to you in the next demo, actually. Uh, yes. Okay. So definitely, we. I, I, I want us. The library we're using has a lot of capabilities. It's about us being able to expose it to you in the most natural experience possible way based on the data we know and we understand based on what you've declared in the app template and based on what you're expressing here in the left side of the screen. So uh, yeah, we can actually do a lot of filtering. I mean, you can, as you can see, we can do a lot of filtering here. Uh, we can do a lot of filtering on the legend itself and we have distinct values uh, as I was doing in one of my previous demos and as I will do in the next demo. Uh, I also want us to be able to select, you know, to do like a bunch of selection here, which I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do a drag and drop here, but of course the drag and drop is just moving by scrap. But I want to be able to do a lassoing of um, specific bubbles or var charts and say keep only or exclude only so you can actually ex you can apply some filtering declaration in your chart by manipulating the 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 the, the, the marks directly i hope that was answering your question if it was not exactly the nature of your question again please please uh re restate it and i'll take another shot at it yeah I guess I question of I... sorry go ahead I just had a Lego add, I'll add, we're, you know, we're trying to expose this library in a way that's intelligent. So like we're, we're giving, you know, we're giving you the power of it by also, you know, kind of nudging you in the right towards some of the right decisions to make with your charts. I think uh, that's just something I want to highlight. Cause I know one thing we're trying to do here is make this intelligent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so one, I have a fundamentals question uh, for you both and either of you can tackle this. Uh, this would be, think about it from somebody who's maybe new to building charts in AppSheet uh, or just new to AppSheet in general. Uh, can you support several, I'm going to assume it's data sources, um, from another data sheet to compare in the chart? So the chart here will support any data sources that AppSheet supports. There's multiple ways I can interpret your question. If your question is to say, can I bring multiple different distinct data set inside of the same chart, uh, it, it's a much harder problem because you know you really have to be able to figure out how you link uh, semantically those data sets uh, and so so that's a harder way so I don't know when or if we'll ever get to that now if you are putting a lot of some logics in your data source to create some views that combine your different tables into one then to us it will appear as a single table and then we can we can apply the chart to it um, but if you do have multiple data sources as I do have by the way in my data set here I have one about themes and I have one about weather. They're both part of the same application. They're totally distinct, coming from different data sources. And I can build some charts on them. But I cannot combine them together, if that was the nature of your, of your question. 
Perfect. And if that did not address the question, please just send us a ping and, and we'll follow up yeah. with more info. Yeah. Uh, all right. There's a question about charts and experience will still will it still work with interactive dashboard. So it's actually uh, a bigger question here. What we want, and there's another feature that is in the work that's a big, big feature. Uh, that's the ability to describe filters and filters that can apply to multiple views at the same time. And that's what you will need to have in order to be able to have a filtering element, whether it's through, done through a chart or just simple filter dropdown that applies to multiple views. So for the chart to be interactive with other charts or other table views or other card views in the rest of your dashboards, we have to be able to share a state of filtering between those views. So one of the things that we're currently building, it's, it's probably will be prone for an entire distinct uh, office hour as well, is to talk about what we're going to do with filtering. And hopefully it will be Q1, Q2. I mean, this is a big, big feature because, again, it's not just about filtering one form. Is how do we store the state of filtering at design time if you want to filter a specific view, in effect, kind of like a slice uh, on a specific state and do that for all of your users. But what if you want to let the users filter their views and persist that across session? We have to have a persistence mechanism per users of their filter state for any of the columns of any of the data sets of your application. And we have to, once we have that persistence logics of your filtered state that can apply to any views using the same data source, well, then we can start making the uh, dashboard more interactive. So, so yes, our intent is to be, for you to be able to interact with a chart or a view that is a, sorry, a card or a table or any, or even a map and have that filtered state being able to apply to the other views as well. But it will require us to have that uh, shared uh, filtering capabilities and that uh, user persistence model. And we're working already actively on all, all three. So that, that will come together, but that will probably come after we start rolling out those charts themselves. And each of those are the underlying features to allow you to have that bigger feature about having an interactive uh, dashboard. But yeah, I, I can't wait for, uh, to, to get, for us to get into that place. All right. Uh, Thierry, I think we should maybe move on to the, the next demo. Let's move on to the next demo. And that's uh, the third one. So, uh, well, yeah, so I was talking about uh, weather. So let's talk about weather data. So let's open the weather view here. So it's actually personal data. Uh, and I'll give you like a 30 second story about that. Uh, we live in Redmond, which of course, as you know, is the, uh, is the high place in the, in, the, in, in the US in terms of rain in terms of number of days of rain, which depressed my wife. And at some point she told us, uh, you know, should we buy a house in Palm Springs or in Chelan uh, where we can get some sun? So what did I do as a, as, you know, as a data person? I downloaded all of the uh, precipitation and snow a month for the last two years in uh, Redmond, Palm Springs, and Chelan. And that's kind of what I did here. So, uh, but what's interesting is I have data for two years. Now I have some time information in my data set, which is really what I want to emphasize here. So. Same thing here again, uh, you know, that's the classic experience where you can look whatever, you know, I've got the station ID, the station name, date, precipitation, and snow level. Uh, and then you can aggregate that by whatever you want to aggregate. So let's see what the new chart experience will give us here. So one thing I forgot to mention earlier, but you may have noticed is I had some different icons here. That icon here on the left was saying, hey, we understand that what column is numerical. So we might apply different treatment to it. This one is just a categorical, categorical so an enum, an enum or a list of strings of some sort. Or we didn't understand, we could not recognize what was the topology of the data. And then this one, we realized it's actually a timestamp. So, you know, why don't we do something smart about it? So let's do something smart about it. So let's double click on that. So as I double click on that, same thing here by default, we create the record count, just aggregate by the number of records in that uh, a transaction in that data set. By default, it will go to the granularity of the data. So if the data is at the day level, at the minute, at the hour, it will break it down by whatever that timestamp. But now it's a date. So there's some things we sh should be able to do about that. The first thing is, well, I actually want to see it at the year level. So we cannot give you all the pre-aggregation possible. The quarter level, of course, if that's what you want to see, the month level, or go back down to the day level. But here also, I also want to uh, highlight something here. It is time. So time, we know, is best represented at the analytically as a line chart. And so that's why we're making it as a line chart. But what if instead of months, you said, I want to see the month's name. So here I have two years of data, which means I'm showing you 24 points. 
But if you're saying I want the month's name, there's only 12 points. I want to see all the data related to January, all the data related to February, all the data related to March. So if I do that, it's not a continuous axis anymore. It's a categorical analysis. So now we switch to a bar chart because this is the most logical and ethically correct way to show you the data. Now, again, if you don't like what we did for you here, and you say, no, I really want to show that as a line chart, even though it doesn't really make sense analytically, uh, at least not as much as a bar chart, you can still do that. So uh, let's go back to my bar chart. But again, you know, some of the smart will continue to apply here. So, um, OK, I should have put that back into auto mode. Here we go. Uh, OK, so we did that. Uh, oh, and, uh, yeah, of course, what I want to do here is actually replace. And notice what I, I've been doing a lot here is drag and drop or double clicking against. We want you to be able to have something useful within a click or two. And we want to let you replace things. So like, for example, here, I don't want to force you to remove and then drag. I just want you to be able to you drag over precipitation over the record, and boom, it just gets replaced. And of course, this one is the average. That's actually what you will want to see here, because it's over multiple um, multiple uh, station. And you know, same thing here. I want to see now the average again. And you know, somebody was asking me, can we filter on the fly? So here again, any single time you will have a, you know, a set of values, measures, or a categorical uh, a chart that's broken down in colors by categories, which means by multiple value, yes, no's, or you know, blue, 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 green, or whatever is the size, or, or, or things that you want to break down the chart by, uh, you will have the legend for it, and you'll be able to use the legend to do some filtering for each of the values as well. Um, so uh yeah and of course the last thing i want to do here is uh potentially replace the date by the name as well and here notice when i replace from the date to the name it went back again here to say and actually this one i think is actually easier to look in this way yes which one actually has the most uh rain well that's all of the three stations in redmond and then Chelan and then palm spring get none and then for the snow however it is actually different for the snow so actually actually i had a hit right here so for the snow, it is actually Chelan that gets a lot of snow, and we literally just got 10 inches uh, last night. Uh, and then a lot less with Redmond, and again, nothing for Palm Spring. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, the end of the demos for today. There's definitely a bunch of things you know, that we're not finished. We're, not, we're, we're far away from prime, prime time. First of all, there's a lot of feedback you're going to tell us about what you'd like to see and what you'd like to, uh, to make sure that we support. We need to add pie charts and donut charts. Uh, we need to be able to allow you to filter. There is one demo I haven't done here. We were trying to get it uh, until yesterday with, with Ben, but uh, we were hitting a little bug here. Is actually the ability to break down, uh, to break down a categorical charts. So let's say this guy by color. Uh, sorry, uh, maybe put that here instead. Uh, like and. I'm hesitant to do that. Of course, this one doesn't make sense this way. It makes sense that way. But is to what if now I dragged name in color? Well, what you would expect to see is now five lines, one for each of the station. It doesn't quite do that right now. It actually struggles a little bit. So I won't demo it because it's broken. But that's literally the next thing that I want to be able to get before we put it into your hands, because that's the first thing I know many of you are going to try to do. You're going to take a bar chart or line chart, and you're going to want to break it by a categorical field. That's that's one of the most common requests we had as, as feature enhancement. So that's what I definitely want us to get before we actually put that out in your hands as, uh, as preview. So um, sorry. yeah, and sorry again for my wife uh, in the background here. <laughs> hey, we're all working from home now. Well, uh, so okay, she doesn't, so... Uh, you know, she doesn't uh, reveal any Microsoft secrets. We're good. <laughs> that's true. Uh, so a question that came in, uh, will it be possible to have stacked bar charts? So where yes. the bar chart is by month name, what its stacked values for the different years, et cetera? Yeah, yeah, we, we should. We, we should uh, we, yeah, definitely. Uh, stack bar charts, stack uh, line charts, which is really uh, area charts. And that's really what that is. Uh, yeah, and that's exactly what I was saying. You, in order to get stacked bar charts, um, most cases, stacking bars for measures makes no sense. Uh, I know that's what we do currently in the current experience, but it actually it actually does not make a lot of sense. What most people really want to do is create a, a stacked bar chart for the same measure, but breaking all of the various values of your product or your product category or your regions. So you can see what is the contribution of that region, contribution of that product to the total of each of the bar. And that's exactly the feature we were trying to get working last night. 
that we didn't get to. So that 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 is the one I want us to at least make working before we can put it in your hands. Because otherwise, we're going to get too many of exactly those questions. When will we get this? When will we get that? So, yeah. Uh, all right, so this is an iOS question. Uh, any plans for evolving dashboards for iOS, especially iPads with UX is a little bit more ideal. Uh, I would love to hear more in detail here. The, the dashboards that we have, uh, in terms of the structures, are the same, whether you're on iOS, Android, or uh, on the browser. So if there's something specific about iOS behaviors of dashboards that is not working well for you, I, I'd love for you to actually reach out to us directly through a community post uh, or some sort to explain. To. And if it's already in the community and you're already talking with Gil, who is our mobile, uh, or sorry, our Mandar, who is our iOS developer, about that, uh, just tag me on it so I can look at it. But uh, I'm not familiar with what's the difference in behaviors. Or are expecting that there should be any difference in behaviors with uh, iOS than there should be with Android or browser. All right. Uh, so this question that just came in: um, Will the scatter scatter plot allow? Oops, more, will the scatter plot allow a plot? Ah, apologies. If the scatter plot will allow to plot a regression line over it. There we go. Yeah, so um, <laughs> that's one is interesting. Uh, so trend lines, uh, not regression line, but trend lines are something we support today in the current experience. So we, that's also something we need to, to put into the product before we can roll it out. Against it. Otherwise, we're going to lose backward compatibility. The interesting thing about regression line with, uh, with, with scatter plot is they, they, they might be a bit more complicated to set up here. So uh, I, I don't know yet uh, whether we'll wait and hold the, the preview to get this one or whether that's something we might do after the preview. Okay. All right. Uh, here's another question. I use, and, and some of these are going to get into some of the more general uh, charting experience with AppSheet. I use Excel Open Solver in my workbook for financial optimizations. Does AppSheet support Solver? And if so, how can I implement it into my yeah. AppSheet project? I think I've already responded to that one. So the answer to this one is oh. we read Excel or G Sheets through an API that reads the data from whatever is stored in Excel. Solver, I know, is, a, is an add-on to Excel that allows you to do financial analysis. We actually don't recognize, we don't understand, we can't even communicate with Solver. But whatever Solver persists in Excel, in the Excel data structure that we can query through the API, we get. So you can continue using Solver to do all the financial modeling, so long as the data is stored in either a table or a cell structure in Excel, we'll read it. Perfect. All right, so we have a follow-up question on the iOS, or follow-up clarification. Uh, I'm referring to the pixel size of the resized icons and back and forth icons for slideshow mode in detailed views in dashboard. Small issue, but in terms of UX, it's big. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with that one. If there's already a community post on it, just tag me on it. Uh, my, my suspicion is it's, uh, it's something, it's not actually for Mandor, who's our IS engineer, to look at. It's probably something for our uh, a web app team to, to look at. So it's probably Morgan or, uh, or Adam or something in the team. So yeah, just tag me on this one. I don't know top of my head. The second scale, right. I've just seen the one about the second scale. Yeah, that would be great. I want to get a second scale at some point. Again, second scale is being able to, to have two measures of two different scales and then decide whether you align those scales or not. Uh, yeah, something I would like to do. This, is, this one is on my wish list. I'm not going to hold the preview. For, we're not going to hold the preview for that one. But yeah, I'd love to get to this one someday. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we have a question from Grant. And Grant, I just want to make sure that I'm collecting this correctly because it looks like it's over three different... Okay, Grant, I'm just going to ask your whole question in its entirety, and Thierry and Ben, go ahead and pull this apart as you fit. Uh, how much focus is being spent on interactivity with the end user? The more of these options that can be exposed to the end user, the more simple the development becomes. Could we set a default, but then allow the end user to tweak and filter, et cetera? like the ascending, descending, sorting would be awesome to have at the end user yeah. level. I'm not thinking the columns, but I'm thinking the type of chart, the sorting, et cetera. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I, I agree at some point that uh, being able, you know, here, for example, what I would like to see here is right next to the precipitation, a small sort icon. And you click on it, and in effect, what I'm doing here, 
uh, be able to do it directly from the precipitation. From the precipitation. So uh, having the visual cue directly in the chart to not just simply do filterings like we have here, uh, because here we do it at the chart level. Actually, the, the logical way to do it here is actually to remove those. Well, no, that's really what you would want to do here. Uh, and then be able to change the sorting by literally having a small sort icon right next to uh, to the to the axis legend will be the logical way to do it. So what we really want to do here is, and that's actually what that icon here on the left here, I didn't talk about it because it actually also has a bug right now, but being able to go here and literally preset a filter so that anything you see at the rendering is already pre-filtered at the data level. It's kind of like a, a slice in some way and, uh, or a security filter. You do it way before anybody can look at it and then still be able to find that filter uh, at the runtime. So we want to be able to do both because we think there's value to both. There's definitely value for the app author to say, on that data set for that specific view, I really want you to only see my open item or close item or red item or French items or whatever that is for that, that you're trying to convey through that chart view. And then you still want to allow the user to potentially continue refining to do their own analytics, so long as then we can persist that across uh, sessions as well. Because if we don't persist it, then people are going to start getting very frustrated if we lose their changes every single time we reset uh, the, the view. Or So um, yes, we want to do both. Uh, again, we, we have a lot more work to do on the view itself. We have a lot more work to do in terms of being able to persist user changes. Uh, right now, there's only one place where we persist user change is in the actual configuration of the dashboards. Uh, we're just introducing, I think we just have or are about to do resizing of columns in a table that you want to be able to persist per user as well. So we, we're also building in an infrastructure to, to have a more generic mechanism for persisting user changes. And the filter state, the sort state, uh, all those things will also be part of that. So yes, 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 and yes. It might not be there right. for the preview, though, to be, to be fair. It might not be there for the preview. For the preview, what I really want us to do, and we'll talk about that in conclusion, is to be able to validate that you can express all of the charts and all of the analysis that you want to be able to express. All right. Thank you for that, Terry. Uh, so this is a, a question we may not have an answer for right now, but um, I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> Will these features be plan-specific, uh, in other words, according to in other words, according to one's option he has. Burton, if you can clarify Sorry. that a little bit. I'm not trying um, to understand. I, my, yeah, so my assumption here is the ask, it, it's structured a, a little odd, but they're asking if these charting capabilities are going to be plan specific. For example, oh, 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 will these avail oh. be available in all plans, only to pro, et cetera? So you caught me off guard. We haven't had that conversation at all. Uh, honestly, I didn't even cross my mind because the chart that you can, charting you can do today is for all plans. I was assuming all of the things I've shown you today will be for all plans uh, because I don't know why we will want to start to limit some of those, plus it will create some more complications. Now, I don't want to say we're never going to put some distinctions between plans, but anything I showed you today is fairly basic, actually, even though it's way more advanced than we can do today. It's actually yeah. fairly basic. We're not even close to a Tableau or a Power BI. Uh, well, actually, maybe, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say anything on, on the red card. But anyway, uh, yeah, so it's, it's so basic for now that I would expect that to be on the, to be to be for all plans. Now, if someday, let's say, we say to do something more complex, like, for example, being able to combine multiple data sets inside of a chart and those kind of things, yeah, it might become more sophisticated for richer type of scenarios where we might want to put something. But right now, the, the, the distinction between plans is really around governance, around type of data sources, and I think it's, it's as well like that. So again, don't, don't quote me on that. Well, actually, you could. But again, I'm not making any assertion and statement about we'll never do it. But it doesn't look like uh, that's what, what would make sense at that point. Right. So and just to echo Terry, um, so it's being, we don't have an answer as of right now. We will clarify that. But as of right now, um, we're expecting things to remain status quo. All right. Uh, so a question here. And um, this one's structured a little odd as well, but I'm going to do my best uh, to represent the question. Uh, are the charts interactive? I mean, could we be able to get more details by clicking or tapping the graphic? Um, this is pretty straightforward. Terry, would you like to answer this? Yeah, so, I mean, they are interactive in the sense that you can filter and sort. Can you drill down, which, which is often what people think, like, could I double click on Redmond and, for example, go down to a different dimension or to go down if there's a hierarchy? Now, we don't have a concept of hierarchy quite yet, so there's really no drill down you can do. Like, where will I go from double-clicking on Redmond to what? 
uh, well, here also my data set is not very, uh, very, very rich, but even in the film data set, if I double click on a specific author or actor, where do I go down to? Now, there are sometimes data sets where you have product, product categories or country and, uh, and continent and counties and stuff like that, where there's a natural drill down path semantically in your data set that we could follow if you could express those hierarchies. So right now, it's more the structure of the data we have and the semantics about the data that does not allow us to, to allow a drill down pass. The, the library itself totally does support it. So we could go there someday. We will need to be able to define what is a drill down pass between what field to what field, uh, because it becomes very easy. You double click on Redmond. If you say, I want to be able to drill down from Redmond to date, for example, to months. Right? I want to see now a breakdown. It, for us, it's the same as saying, filter on Redmond and replace the, Redmond, the, the name axis with the date axis on months. Right, that's what it is. And, and that's what a double click will mean at that point. But we have to be able to express what is a drill down path. So somewhere in the UI on the left here or in the, the data, in the column, we have to put a place where you can define a relationship between column, which is describing a drill down path. Once we have that semantics in the app, absolutely, we can totally surface that in the chart itself, both at design time and runtime. I know it's a long answer, right. but hopefully that was useful. <laughs> uh, all right, so question from John, and, and this is a, a good kind of operational question. Um, the question is, will we start getting updates with the chart tester group? What's the best way to stay on top of the progress? Um, I'm actually happy to, to tackle this for you, Terry. Well, we should actually go on the side. If you would like. Well, we should actually go to the side because that's a great segue to the slides, yeah, and we're finished before the end anyway. So why don't I slides? stop sharing okay, my screen? So Go ahead. So, John, I uh, will answer this in just a moment. So, let's let's hold on that for for now. And I should push. There we go. There's a little bit of a delay. Okay, there we go. So, the first thing is the good news is you already ho all of you already have the library because the library that we're using to be able to do all that rendering and interaction is already the one we've been using since last August. Uh, that was when we started the private chart, chart group where we wanted you to test the new rendering. We literally replaced the, the old library we had with that new library, but with just ease of functionality. So visually, it looked the same. That was exactly the goal. There was no regression. That was the goal. It was doing exactly the same as before. That was the goal. But it has all the capabilities already in there. So we don't have to introduce new bits and uh, in terms of libraries. For that, you already have it. What we do have now to introduce to you is that new, that little button here. Uh, sorry, I don't, I'm not sharing anymore, but that little button that says new chart experience that allows you to start playing with it too. Now, my hope, and that's really between Ben and I, uh, when we have that level of confidence that it's robust enough, uh, there's, you know, you're not gonna hit a bug within the first five seconds because if you do, then it's very frustrating and then you give up right away and then we don't get valuable feedback. So we're hoping somewhere in, the, in February, that will 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 have enough completion of backward compatibility, so things like pie charts and trend lines, and then the categorical chart, the one that you can stack uh, a bar chart or a line chart by colors, um, uh, are going to be there. Once we have that, uh, yeah, we, we, we probably will we'll be able to release it at that point uh, in the February timeframe. Again, the hope, and that will depend on your feedback and how many more features we want to add to that, is that in the Mar March April timeframe we go GA. Uh, but then that's not it. Once we've done that, what we really want to do is also introduce that type of exploratory experience inside of your managed pages. Like we, you have all the, like, you know, we have all the data about the usage of your application. So in the application managed manage page, we want to be able to give you all of the data set about, uh, about the inside of usage of the, of the app and allow you to slice and dice with the, this, this, uh, this charting experience with all your usage data against the application. And then in the My uh, Account page, or My Team page, sorry, uh, same thing for the uh, account uh, administrator. We want to give you full exploratory capabilities uh, of all of the of your ecosystem, of your account usage, like how many applications, which one are the most used, which one of the most users, what the, how was it trending like, instead of the three hard-coded chart that we give you today. So. Uh, again, this is an investment we're making not just for the chart view, but actually for all of the type of analytical questions you may have as an app author, either on your app or as an account administrator against your account. Uh, and that will be probably Q2, Q3, maybe Q4, 
uh, it depends how, how far we can go. We actually repiping all of the internal data into all the Google technology uh, that are you know that can handle the privacy and compliance that are compliance. So we're doing a huge amount of infrastructure change. Uh, but then once we've done that, it will allow us to expose that data to you using the the same experience that you saw, that you saw today. But that's more later in the year. You want to go to the next slide? So do you want? If you want to talk about this one, or you want me to talk about this one? Uh, I'll talk about it briefly, and then uh, either of you feel free to add additional details. Uh, so Terry mentioned there is a group in the community um, that many of you have signed up for already. Um, that is going to be your best place to get information. We will post all updates there. You won't need to check your inbox for emails from us. Stay tuned to that category. Um, we might push you a note via that. Just keep your eyes peeled, but that is your best uh, single source of truth for all things related uh, to charting over the next few months. If you are not a part of that space already, there's a very long thread. If you if you just search for charts that will say, um, hey, I'd like to be a part of this. How can I be added? Just tag either Terry or myself in that thread, or you can send us a direct message, and we'll make sure you're added to that group as well. Terry, anything yeah. to add? Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to answer some of the questions in line. Uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know, maybe you see it already. What I think we also would like to get some uh, reactions on is the last two, uh, two things here. During testing, we'll definitely give you the old and new option. So be able to go back and forth. Currently, we only persist the old style because we're not changing the app template definition with the new experience, which means whatever you do, like I did during those demos, as soon as you see it save or refresh the page, it's gone. It's not persisted. It's mostly for you to evaluate that you can express all the charts you want to do for backward compatibility or maybe that you couldn't do in the past and now that you can do, and then give us feedback about it. Now, of course, before we ship that for good and GA, we will persist the new one. As a matter of fact, we will only persist the new one and we will migrate all of the old one to the new one. So our intent for now is at GA, general availability, we will switch all of the charts to the new experience, which means we'll convert the definition of the charts from today to the new uh, to the new app template definition of those charts, because as I was saying, we, are, we have a lot more expressiveness with colors and size and tooltips and all those things we can express filters, filter states and all those things that we can now express and that we need to be able to persist. So our intent is at GA to not give the choice anymore, so you are on that new experience and you only. Uh, and I realize that that might be a controversial statement, so that's also something I'm, I'm, I'm curious to hear about that uh, from those of you who may have some strong feelings about it. All right, so the next one. All right, so we have answered a number of these questions already. Um, again, I, I'll just put a little disclaimer here because we have just a few moments left. Keep your questions coming. Again, there's a, a thread in the AppSheet community where you can continue to follow up with us afterwards on this. Um, for those that have been asking questions throughout the session, if we have not addressed it already, and there's a number that we're still trying to get to because you've all asked some really great questions today, um, we will do our best to get back to you in a timely manner. Just know we're, we're not going to leave you hanging. Um, and on that note, uh, let's give some next steps. So uh, as Terry and I both mentioned, reach out to myself or Terry if you are not already a part of the testing group for charts. We'll make sure you're added. Um, it, there will simply be another category in the community on the left-hand side that you'll see that says, I think, chart testing group or chart beta testing group, one of the two. Again, that's going to be your single source of truth for all upcoming releases related to charting. Uh, start testing the features once they are rolled out in the preview phase. As much feedback as you have, uh, give it to us. A great trick, and I for, forgive me if Terry already said this, but if you can take before and after pictures, oh, yeah. that is really, really bene beneficial um, in terms of the progress that we're hoping to achieve. That gives us a great baseline. It shows us if there's any bugs that we're unaware of, a number of other things. But try to take pictures of your app before and pictures of your app after. Uh, visit community.appsheet.com. It is the source that we talk about a lot, but it's for very good reason. Uh, we have a very passionate create our user base uh, when it comes to not only no-code development, but citizen development uh, in general. I, it, it never ceases to amaze us how supportive everyone is. I think a really good example is when COVID first hit last year, 
um, before we had even had a chance to start responding. The community started to react and build applications together to help combat the crisis. So kudos to all of you. Um, you inspire us every day. So definitely check that out and connect with people either geographically or people at your skill level to improve. It's a great resource for that. And then register for the next session. Uh, we will be moving these to monthly for right now. We might change that after March, but these office hour sessions will be taking place once a month for the next couple of sessions. So uh, just a heads up on that, and we'll release the date shortly for that. And then let us know what you think about either the format of this office hours or the content that we're discussing as well. All right. And with that, Thierry, Ben, any final words before we wrap up? Uh, no, there was actually one question about where in the community thread uh, is it, or the, that we can request uh, access to new shot testing. Uh, again, just put, uh, uh, um, uh, well, actually, Jennifer, maybe you're best to answer that, but put a, put a post on the community because the, 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 the chart group is private. So you have to go into the public place and ping either Jennifer or myself, say, hey, I'd like to go into the private chart group, and they will just roll you into the private chart group. Is that, is that the right correct way to do it, Jennifer? Yeah, you, I think there's, I'm just going to look right now. Um, it's question 64. Matt, if you type, yeah, if you type yeah. in want it, or if you type in chart testing, the second post will come down, and I'll send you the link directly, but the, the second link down is going to say wanted chart testers, and it looks like it's locked. Um, so if I'll unlock it so individuals can post that they'd like, and that will notify us immediately. Also, uh, you can private message me on the forum if you are not comfortable having it publicly posted and just say my handle on there is Jennifer at, um, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> it's hard to miss me, so that also works as well. All right. And with that, uh, Thierry and Ben, I just want to say a quick thank you for joining us today and talking about charts. I know this is something that our um, app creators are very passionate about, and it's exciting to see where we're at now. And uh, thank you to all of you for joining us today. Um, it means the world to us that you're able to engage with us, especially at a time like this, and provide your feedback um, and just be genuinely excited about what we're doing. So with that, uh, Thierry, I'll actually turn it over to you for your closing line um, that I've actually been borrowing as of late. Oh, well, thank you. I'm super excited to see the level of engagement and the passion. Again, my encouragement is send us feedback today when, you, when we roll it out. I would say play with it as fast as soon as possible because we iterate really fast with Ben and Archer. I mean, it, you know, we, we're making a lot of progress between the three of us. And so we literally, really, the, the, the experience evolves and improves daily. So whatever feedback you send us, we may be able to act on it literally the, the, the day after or things like that. But if you wait two or three weeks, because I, I understand you're very busy, you, we actually might miss the, 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 the option and the window to actually put it into product before a preview or a specific release. So um, yeah, I would definitely encourage you. And I definitely want to uh, double down on, the, on Jennifer's, you know, put a screenshot before and after, because that, there's nothing like visualizing what's not working or what's not to your liking. Uh, it's always better than words. Uh, and and uh, yeah, again, super, super excited about your level of excitement and encouragement and, uh, and uh, as uh, you know, and, and um, activity on the community. Like I was saying to answer one of you here, the, most of the team, Praveen, myself, we are on the community every day. Now I cannot respond to everything every day, but we look, I, I read everything every day. And sometimes I let the community answer itself, but I look at everything every day. So even though sometimes you put stuff on the community and you're thinking, well, you know, nobody's responding and they don't care, they don't look, no, I look at everything. Uh, Praveen looks at everything. Uh, but it's really, we, we try to choose when do we let the committee sort it out by, you know, to inside together versus when do we interject in there. But, but when we look at things, we, th we see things. So definitely don't, don't, uh, don't interpret our lack of an answer to your question to the fact that we didn't see it or we didn't care for it. We do. All right. And with that, everyone, uh, to quote Thierry, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you online. Thanks so much. Thank you.